Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton at art to life and I want to talk today about mark making, but what I, I realized when I was sitting over there looking at this painting and more of pretty much all my work lately is like, I'm not really using paintbrushes anymore. Now, and, and there's something about that, that uh, is, is changing my work. And, and so what am I using? Well, I am using crappy paintbrushes, but they're more for just moving the paint, getting paint on the, on the picture. And then I'm using trowels a lot more, um, larger tools to move the paint around. And then I'm also using uh, these oil sticks from R&F, uh, handmade paints, as well as um, Sennelier's oil pastels and oil sticks. And there's something about the mark that is, it's just so different than a paintbrush. And I think what's going on here is that the paintbrushes, the reason I'm sort of migrating away from that a little bit is that there's something about when you're not making a mark with a paintbrush or when you are making a mark with a paintbrush, you, you can, you just, you really controls, you can really control it. It feels like you're doing it. Does that make sense? Like, when you don't, you can't totally control things, which I can't as well with these tools, they make marks that don't feel like me. There's already too much of me in the painting anyway. So having marks that are surprising and fresh and different than what, even for me, it, it broadens and it's a difference between me and the kind of marks that I would normally make. You know when you're working and you're, you're trying really hard and you're struggling and you care about it and you, you don't wanna wreck it? That work always feels that way because it's all about you. It's about you not, you about, uh, you gotta have a success, you're you gotta make it really good, you're afraid. It's all got you in it so much. I find the most interesting work is when it isn't so much about me. I'm conducting it and throwing it together, but it's more from a distance. I don't know if that makes sense. So this is really interesting because the tools we use actually can broaden our work. When the work feels that it isn't so personal, personal like it really matters, then other people can enter the work in an easier way. It's bigger work, it's more expansive. It's kind of remarkable, but it does make work that is, that's bigger. And that's really interesting to me. So I'm curious as to what, you know, th this is something I just kind of realized that like, I don't buy expensive paintbrushes. I'm not even using them. This is like a, a thing for putting grout on. I think it's a, literally this three inch brush is about a dollar fifty <laughs> from the paint store, and I haven't bought a new brush. I ruin brushes; they're just shovels for getting the paint on there. There's nothing wrong with paint brushes, but this is just something I'm curious about and seeing what's happening um, and and why what it is about the paint paintbrush. It's because it leaves this mark. We can get so anal with it. We can control it so much. Now, of course, you can learn to be so out of control and, you know, think of John Singer Sargent or any, you know, you can use paintbrushes and make them feel not like paintbrushes, but this is just something that I'm seeing and I'm curious if this is, uh, you know, like what kind of, what kind of art are you making that doesn't involve a paintbrush? So I'd love to see the comments uh, below. Uh, let us know, because it's kind of wide open at this point, right? Like anything under the sun, you can start using to move and create, move the, move the material around on the picture. Paintbrushes are actually pretty limited. How you make art without using a paintbrush is also gonna be the subject of this coming week's Kitchen Table Art Project. It's on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, so come along. Um, we're gonna be making art, and it kind of relates to um, open your kitchen drawer and grab some, uh, some new mark-making materials that you uh, maybe haven't used before, and we're gonna be doing that. We've got some amazing guests. So um, 
be come and come and check it out. So I'd love love to see you there. As well as if you want to join the Art to Life Free Facebook group, um, there's a lot of cool stuff being made in there. And this whole kitchen table art project thing, if you want to find out more about it, go to kitchentableartproject.com. You can download, you can um, find the other uh, episodes that we've done, as well as the PDFs from the call. We put together all that cool information. Last week was amazing. I just bought the book. It's amazing, you know, listening to all these different artists with different ideas. There's so much cool content out there and so much stuff that can inspire you. So I just want to say this is the book I was talking about, um, Disrupted Realism by John Seed. It's amazing. There's some incredible artists in here. And um, Chad Little, uh, the figurative painter, abstract figurative painter, uh, recommended this on the call. I already got the book. It just came today. It's so good. So I highly recommend checking this out and uh, I will see you hopefully on Wednesday. Okay, thanks. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.